Welcome, everybody, to the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for tuning in, literally, from all around the world, live to our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, where we're bringing back the lost out of conversation. And we are approaching some 650 episodes that we've done live seven days a week, which is extraordinary, with guests coming in from all around the world, celebrity friends from uh, a variety of fields of endeavor, television and music and film and Broadway, Hollywood, stage, as well as comedy, sports, inspiration, and so much more. And it's always a blessing and a pleasure when you guys tune in. Our Lovity Squad, watching literally from all around the world, if this is your first time here joining us on our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, we call The Gym Master Show Live. We thank you for tuning in. We Hope that you spread the word to everybody you know about our series. We're here all the time, and we're having a great time with uh, our guests and our viewers who we call the Lovities. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's the channel you're watching right now. As a matter of fact, if you'd like to comment in our JMS live chat room right now, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's a special gift for subscribers. And uh, the YouTube channel is the one you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. Don't forget to click that notification bell as well so you never miss any of the amazing episodes we are doing. And if you love this episode and any of the ones you love, give them a thumbs up and also leave a comment for us as well. Always a pleasure to have you here. I see all the comments already built up. Everybody excited because we have a phenomenal guest. We have an acting and comedy legend. Yes, we're talking about Joyce Bullifant. Uh, she's live and direct from Palm Springs, California. And we just had, we were on the phone chatting with one another. We just had a hilarious time getting this together from a technical standpoint. Um, she's a real trooper. It was very funny. I know that's the part you'd probably re really wish you could see. Um, she was moving around her beautiful home in Palm Springs, trying to find a perfect spot where she could get the video and the audio, and she doesn't have to hold her phone. Uh, she's got it all positioned. She looks like a million bucks. But she says, I'm sounding to her like Donald Duck. <laughs> the way the audio is coming through back to her, she says, I'm sounding like Donald Duck. So, you know, everything sounds good on this end. But hey, you know, anything happens when you're live. She knows she's in the business. I know that uh, sometimes things get a little crazy, but we are so honored to have her here. She's one of our personal favorites, uh, one of America's most familiar faces. Joyce released her memoir entitled My Four Hollywood Husbands. It's a book about lasting love that is woven through the fabric of the world of entertainment and, and even serious subjects as well, alcoholism, illiteracy, harassment, codependency, and family. She says it's about truth, my truth, my perspective. It's a phenomenal book and definitely one you're going to want to add to your collection, everybody. Her extensive credits, of course, as I've mentioned, stage, television, and film have made her a familiar face and a popular personality. After early days in summer stock at uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City, that led to regional and Broadway roles and tall story and uh, also Auntie Mame, Gypsy Rose Lee, Gentleman, uh, the Queens with Helen Hayes, Joyce's former mother-in-law, is the extraordinary actress Helen Hayes, yes. And of course, the Paisley Convertible with Sam Waterston and Bill Bixby, as well as Whisper to Me, for which she received the Daniel Blum Theater World Award as well. In addition to her incredible life story filled with never-before-told entertainment antidotes behind the scenes and working with the Hollywood elite, it is Joyce's hope that those reading this love story will have an understanding of the hurtful actions that an alcoholic, a codependent have on others, and most important, that can harm the children as well. Uh, and of course, she played uh, Gavin McLeod's wife, Murray's wife, on the Mary Tyler Moore show. She played uh, Helen Hunt's mother as well. She had a fairy tale life with James MacArthur and Helen Haynes, Helen Hayes, uh, that uh, turned out to be a whole other scenario. And also, I don't know if you knew, but uh, of course, you know, Florence Henderson was cast as Carol Brady on the Brady Bunch, but initially that role was set for Joyce Bullifant as well. She's danced with Fred Astaire. She's one of the most legendary game show, um, participants on all of them, match game, password. She's done them all. 
but she's absolutely extraordinary. Early television appearances on Boris Karloff's thriller, Ronald Reagan's General Electric Theater, Play of the Week, and so much more. The Bad News Bears, Alice, Policewoman, My Three Sons, Dr. Kildare, Perry Mason, McHale's Navy, The Real McCoys, Love American Style, The Joey Bishop Show, just to name a few, gang. She's worked with her friends, Betty White, Rita Moreno, Ethel Merman, and again, all the game shows, Name That Tune, Password, Match Game, Crosswits, Tattletales, To Tell the Truth, 25,000 Pyramid, all of it. And even Decisions, hosted by David Letterman. That is just the short uh, list. Movies, a lot of TV movies too, Hanging by a Thread with Patty Duke, Darn You with Harry Landers and Tyne Daly, Little Women with Meredith Baxter and William Shatner. And she has also written and produced and directed two educational films about learning differences gifts of greatness that starred julie harris and ed asner and danny thomas and patty duke and different heroes different dreams starring helen hayes tony danza barbara eden yes julie collins and greg Luganis, among others uh, recipients of the hans christian award as well which joyce founded to recognize dyslexics who have made a positive contribution to society uh, really absolutely unbelievable um, she's just extraordinary and we're very excited to have her here. So let's bring her on live and direct from Palm Springs, where she says, I sound to her like Donald Duck, the way the sound is coming through. But, uh, <laughs> as long as you guys can hear it, you're, you're good to go. She's here. Wait till you see that smile. She's laughing. We both need a couple <laughs> of glasses of wine. There she is. The one and only Joyce Bullifant. It's Daisy Duck. Was it Daffy? No, Daffy Duck and Donald Duck. I'm Daffy <laughs> Duck. I just wish that your viewers could hear how you sound. Because <laughs> it's is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And I'll try not to laugh <laughs> and take you seriously. You, but it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Something through her technology gang is having is twisting my voice where it's sounding high pitched and sort of uh you know, it's like all, a Mickey all, Mouse. It's all <laughs> like, it sounds like my voice on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like Joyce's voice on steroids. <laughs> Usually it's very low dulcet tones. I don't know what's <laughs> happening there in Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you? You look and sound fantastic. How yes. are you? And you know, we've gotten through pretty much so far, you know, this situation of the last two years, which has been very, very crazy. And we've all had to adjust our lives and we've had to sort of move things around. How have you been, Joyce? Well, it's been a little difficult since I lost my Roger. Yes. Uh, the oh. love of my life. I mean, I loved all my other husbands. I really did, or I wouldn't have married them. But Roger yeah. always stayed with me from the first day I met him. Yeah. And um, he passed away on July 12th, um, 1918. It's hard to believe. And I people say, oh, time gets everything will get better with time it it doesn't it gets doesn't really get better it gets different yeah you yeah, know yeah. your heart my every once in a while i just get my heart just goes Whoa, oh why aren't yeah. you here <laughs> i need you exactly tell us about roger for folks who you know maybe they never met him they didn't know about him who, who well, was, was roger to you I, I, one of the things that um, we dated for a while after Jimmy and I were divorced, it's all in the book, but he was, um, he had a problem with alcohol. And when we got together finally in, in 2000, um, he had gone to Betty Ford and been sober for four years, but he was still very delicate as yeah. far as as he would say, going down a slippery slope. Mm. It took a while before he felt really strong to be around people who were drinking. And I tell you, 24 years sober he was when he passed away. And I had learned so much by the time we got together, thank heavens, that if he had been acting in an alcoholic way, um, it would have been very difficult for me. I had a real turning point in the book 
where he said to me, if you make me leave, I'll start drinking again. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and this was a big turning point. Yes. I looked at him and I said, that's your problem. And mm -hmm. I walked away. Yeah. And and I meant it, but only, I only got to that point because I had done so much work on myself yes. as a codependent person. Right. And codependent people just feed into the disease of alcoholism. Yeah. So I was very much a part of the marriages not working because of my codependency. Yeah. See, that's the thing. And you realized that. Did you realize that early on, Joyce, or that that take time for you to realize that? The oh, I, oh, it took me, it took me four husbands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it did. And, um, and a lot, a lot of work. I even, I even uh, went away and uh, did rehab for codependency yes. because my, I, I think I, I have to, looking back on it all, I think it had a lot to do with my ego, which is terrible. I thought if they're drinking, they're drinking because they don't have anyone that really loves them. And if I, if I, Joyce Bullifant, really loves them, they won't want to drink. <laughs> right. Yes. I mean, that's a pretty big ego to think like that. That you could take care of them and, and fix things for them. And that's right. the caring soul and empathetic soul that you are. Well, I, mean, I think yeah. it took a lot to realize that how much of a problem I was in the marriage. And um, it always takes two, as they say, right? Yes. My yes. children adored and loved Roger and my grandchildren because they were so proud of him that he was able to overcome the disease of alcoholism yeah. and, and work on it. And he, he really did. And he really, he wanted to save his marriage before I came out, before I was involved and we got married. He wanted to save that marriage, his second one. Um, and so he went to Betty Ford and he got help. Yeah. But sometimes what happens when one person in a marriage becomes well, and they've learned things, the, the dynamics change between the couple. Yeah. And sometimes they're able to overcome that and sometimes they aren't. Yeah. And I think that's what happened in, the, in their marriage. Do you, were, were any of them at all uh, jealous of your success or all the attention you received? Because you know, you're a brilliant actress, you have a wonderful comedic timing, uh, like America's sweetheart in so many different ways with the, the a wholesome image and the things that you were cast in in so many different realms. Uh, a lot of attention comes your way. People absolutely love Joyce Boulafont. Was there ever any um, jealousy at all because of the success, because of all the attention that did come your way over the years in your career? Oh, with, with my husband's? Oh, I, I don't think so. However, I do remember one time Jimmy McCarthy and I did a play together and he got really bad reviews and I got a really good review. And I remember he was standing over my shoulder in the dressing room. We were reading the review mm. and I could see it, that, that his wasn't good. And I, I couldn't get rid of the newspaper fast enough as he was reading it. Yes. And it was never discussed. We yeah. never discussed it. Yeah. I never got the feeling that any of them were jealous. And I always, um, I was always happy for them. I was worried about Jimmy because he kind of liked women. So when he went off to do a film, uh, if I couldn't go with him, I was worried. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess it, that would be a little jealousy, but that not career wise, I was always very happy for my husbands that they were working and, and doing what they love. And um, Roger was also a composer Yes. And he wrote a song for Barbara Streisand that was in her first TV special mm. and a song for, for Bing Crosby, which I love teasing him about, called 
Argyle the Christmas stocking. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I'm sure everyone knows that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he was a wonderful musician and composer. I remember when our first Valentine Day together, when we were married, I came down the steps from my bedroom and he had left on the bed a um, dozen red roses. And, and I came down to thank him and he said, well, did you see what was underneath the roses? I said, no, I did. And I went back upstairs and he'd written a song for me called Joyce Again, oh, because we were together again, again after many years. Yes. And beautiful song, so pretty with lyrics and gorgeous. Very but nice. I, I treasure that when I feel very sad, I I have it of him on, um, on my phone on the video playing the the song oh that's really really touching it's very beautiful and i know we have we showed this earlier but there's a nice photo of uh of you guys oh, i see a picture you're showing yeah. that's, that's you, a, you you guys yeah. yeah that's a film we did for my son john asher called i hate kids <laughs> <laughs> i know it was a funny show. And John's father's William Asher, right? The prolific yes, director uh, and producer. William Asher adopted John. Yep. Um, John's biological father was Ed Mallory, but he was never close to his biological father and very, very close to Bill. They, they yeah. had a great love. And, and he taught John a lot about filmmaking. Uh, an amazing uh, yeah, director and producer worked on I Love Lucy and so mm -hmm. many shows, William Asher. If you look at the credits of some of the most nostalgic classic television shows. Oh, it's amazing. William you Asher. Know, yeah. When we got married, we fell in love after three months. He kept asking me to marry him almost immediately. And I said, you don't even know me. <laughs> I said, I know what it is. I said, I was helping him decorate his new home he'd built. And I said, it's just you you think you you think I'm Elizabeth who helped you pick out wallpaper and he do all that. He was married at one time and, to Elizabeth Montgomery yeah. who played Bewitched. And he said, no, we never picked out wallpaper together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that's maybe why you liked me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he kept on, he was the most persistent romantic suitor any woman could ever have mm. and finally i just gave in <laughs> yes said that and we were married yeah. 20 years very happily years. so and it's all in the book so we encourage folks to check out the book but um how old were you when you first got married to your first husband tell us about your first husband and there's oh, the book. i was uh just before my i was 20 and so was Jimmy. He was a week older than I. We're talking about James and, MacArthur, another amazing Yeah, we actor. were very, very young, but we had gone to boarding school together. The girls' campus and the boys' campus were a mile apart, but wow. we had classes together. And we started dating when we were 16, and that's all in the book. And so by the time we were 20, we had really were in love. Yeah, and um, it it was an exciting time and a scary time to be that young. But people were getting married much younger at that time. So James MacArthur, and how long was the, how long did that marriage last, Joyce? Nine years and two wonderful children. Yes, and it, it's very sad because Jimmy and I had a wonderful rapport. Um, People loved to see us together banter yeah. back and forth. Uh, he was very funny and very charming, very witty. And his son, Charlie, has a lot of that good quality of his father. But then after a couple of drinks, uh, it was not he was not fun to be around and it wasn't healthy for the children. And they do thank me for having the courage to be able to to leave the marriage. It was very hard because his mother and I were very, very close. And his mother is? Helen Hayes. Yes, yeah. yes. And you stayed close and in contact with Helen Hayes over the years after the marriage dissolved? Yes. Um, 
it was a very tumultuous relationship and uh, loving and scary and sad and happy. It had ups and downs. And um, after I do a show called Remembering Helen Hayes with Love. Yeah. And it's about her from the time she was a little girl growing up in our relationship. And um, I've done it a few times and people really seem to enjoy it. And I was a little nervous about doing it in front of some of the family members because I, I'm very honest about everything. I, I just figure hopefully that my work when it's personal, hopefully it helps other people who might be in the same situation. Um, and, and I learned a lot more about my relationship with Helen yeah. when I was writing my book. There were lots of things I didn't understand, things she said and did until one day I was talking with the editor of the book, which was 750 pages at the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's only two hundred and seventy-five now. When you, when you edit, it's like cutting off your right arm. Yes, but it rolls along much faster. Oh, but boy. I think I have a second book in there. Uh, but it wasn't until I was talking to the editor and I said at one point, you know, I don't say this thing that Helen said to me in the show because it was so shocking and and seemed so mean and. And I stopped and I looked at her and she looked at me and she said, well, you know, after reading your book and everything you said and what you said about her, you know why she said it. she was trying to protect you. Mm. And I, oh my Lord, that's exactly what she was doing because we were so close. And her daughter, Mary, had passed away when she was 19 from polio. and. When she would introduce me, she'd say, this is my daughter, Mir I mean, this is Joyce. But I knew she felt that way. It was that kind of re close relationship. What was Helen Hayes really like? You just described a little bit there. For those fans who, you know, love that beloved actress, of course, what was she like from your perspective? Well, it's really interesting. I start the show off like that. And I say, people ask me what she was like. And I say, you know, there's a poem that describes her perfectly. And the poem is, there was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. Oh, that was Helen. <laughs> <laughs> and Lillian Getch, her best friend and my fairy godmother, used to say to me, oh, Joyce, darling, don't worry about Helen when she gets like that. It's just the Irish in her. It's just the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us uh, about uh, a little bit about, and again, it's all in the book, folks. We're just giving you little bits of information here as uh, the extraordinary Joyce Boulefont joins us here on the Gym Master Show live. Um, Tell us about husband number two. When when you and James MacArthur decided, okay, we're going to move on, um, was there space a number of years in between? Not long, but for that space, I was with Roger Perry. <laughs> and that's the love story that weaves through the book. Yes. Um, and then after Roger and I had gone together for about a year, he wanted to move in and have a baby and not get married. And people were doing that. And I yes. said, not this girl. I don't no. do that. I have two little children and I was very square. And he got a little upset and I got upset. And that was the end of that relationship. He broke up with me. And he, he thought, his best friend told me that he was going, decided he'd come back in about six months and then it, everything be okay. Well, not so fast, Mr. Perry. I ended up marrying one of his best friends. <laughs> and that was Ed Mallory. And um, Ed was a very uh, interesting, troubled man, very talented, very sensitive. And um, 
but he had a lot of demons. I don't think mm -hmm. he liked himself a lot. Yeah. And and he drank a lot. And mm -hmm. and that was very difficult. And that marriage lasted seven years. I kept hoping every day was, it'll get better, it'll get better. Yeah. But Mariette Hartley gave me a book. She knew Ed and me, we worked together. And it was called The Co-Alcoholic. And I read the book and every page I was going, oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. Oh, 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 that's me too. And by the time I finished the book, I realized how much a part of the, the destruction of the marriage that I was causing be being a co-alcoholic and um and in in that sense people say well what is that you know what do you mean a co-alcoholic yeah sure well i'll try to explain it the best way i can i think it's when you put someone else's happiness and taking care of them at the expense of losing yourself mm-hmm yeah. I, I think that's the best way I can explain it. Yeah. And it just says to the person who has the drinking problem, um, who becomes ill from it or becomes irritated or angry or strange, it just says, my behavior's okay. She's putting up with it. I guess it's okay. Right. So you're just feeding into it because you think it'll get better, you know, and there's a lot of... Um, the day after with an alcoholic who I remember Jimmy on his knees crying, please love me. I'm sorry. I love you. And I, and I would think, okay, it's going to be better. It'll be okay. And, and I would accept it. And then we go through the whole thing again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, and then with the second marriage, I mean, you said the seven years was that, difficult to pull away from because I mean obviously you you well, care actually, deeply about Ed. I, I loved about Ed James. very much and I was worried about him. Yeah. Be, being the co-alcoholic, I was worried about him. Yeah. And um I thought, boy, something's really wrong with me. And I, I went to get help and I do remember I called Lillian Gish, who was like an angel on this earth. And I hated telling her because we always had these deep spiritual conversations and she was so worldly, and but an angel always. Yeah, and yeah. and I called her and I said, I, I, put, I just kept putting it off. And finally I said, I've got to call and tell her. And I said, oh, Lillian, I have something so sad to tell you. I said, um, I've asked Ed for a divorce and I was just ready for, I don't know what, the earth to fall apart. And she said, oh, darling, maybe you're like I am. She said, just do as I do, love them and leave them. <laughs> she said, the oh, words she from Lillian Gish. <laughs> yeah. She said, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I left out something. She said, maybe you're like I am. You don't have to marry them. Just do as I do. Love them and leave them. And leave them. <laughs> I always had to marry them. You always, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a traditional way of doing, absolutely. And so yeah. then when that marriage um, sort of dissolved, um, was there a time for reflection? Were you at all feeling maybe marriage oh, isn't I felt cut I out for me to, or to go out with another man ever again right i was a complete failure um i put my children my two little children well now i had john and that was i had a little boy and um that was devastating in the book yeah. uh what happened with him by his biological father mm. um i think it was why it was hard for him to ever think of him as a father because yeah. he he frightened him yeah. and um that that was terrible and in between i just thought i don't know how to do this right you know i just don't but then a friend invited me to a dinner party and had a 
an attorney there and I thought, oh, I, I, don't, I don't need to meet anybody. I don't want to meet anybody. I'll drive my own car there. I don't want anybody to pick me. I no, no, no. And I walked out to the swimming pool to, and he was out there and his back was to me and he turned around and I went, oh my goodness. <laughs> he looked as if he stepped out of GQ uh. and he was an attorney on top of that. He wasn't some actor you know, yeah. lived in a make-believe world. But what he did was end up in jail <laughs> from stealing from, <laughs> from people. <laughs> I just guess I didn't know how to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't marry him. I did not marry him. Now, you didn't uh, happen to uh, ask Sue Ann Nivens for advice, did you? <laughs> of course, we took <laughs> Betty White and uh, Mary Tyler Moore and Sue Ann exactly. Nivens. She had her own problems, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. But I, I was very smart. I did not marry him. I yeah. caught on. Yeah. And then um, there was number three, and that, that's William, right? That, uh, yes. yes. Uh, How Bill did you worked, guys Bill meet? Was wonderful. How did you meet? He was ended up being a great father. When we got together, he wasn't crazy about children and family, but he ended up being a perfect family man. Oh. And my children adored him. Mary really thinks of him too as a father. And uh, and John just worshipped the, the ground he walked on. And then with that, I got five other children. So I had my own Brady Bunch, even you, though I didn't get to play Mrs. Brady. Right. I was a real live Mrs. Brady. You were right. <laughs> and that was great. Elizabeth shared her children with me, and I love them dearly. They're like my own. Yeah. And uh, Danny, Bill's first wife, two children, Leanne and Brian, we're very close-knit family, all of us. And we get together for holidays and birthdays, and it's great. How did you you and William initially meet? How were you introduced? Uh, to who? William Asher. Initially. Oh, my goodness. It was a blind date. Was it really? It was a blind date. And I just learned um, that Eleanor Donahue had passed away. I didn't know that. I And she was a friend. She we were doing police story together and she said, Joyce, I think there's somebody you should meet. And I said, uh, who's that? And she said, well, he, I'm not going to tell you about him, but I'll tell you one thing. He's not been dating the right kind of women. <laughs> I said, what does that mean? And I'd never been on a blind date in my life. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't go out, you know, with people, without somebody else there, if I don't know the right. man. Uh, I'd learned that from somebody on Match Game. And I said, I, I don't do that. And she said, well, I think you'd enjoy him. And anyway, I'm, I'll have him call you. I said, okay. So I he called and I, I said, hello. And he said, hi. And I thought he said, this is Harry Ashley. <laughs> because I don't hear that well and I'm blonde and I'm dyslexic and I was thinking about where's this child, where's that one and I heard <laughs> Harry Ashley and he said um, he said Plaza Suites and oh first he said I heard you're riding the freedom train and I thought he meant that I was going down south and working for <laughs> for all the people to get together and and lack of seg segregation and yeah. I thought that's what he meant that I was on the freedom train <laughs> and I said I'm not uh, yeah I uh, what do you mean <laughs> yeah. said, well I wondered if you'd like to go see Plaza Suite is playing uh, down at the Almonds and next week and I said oh yes I'd love to and then I thought oh my gosh I said that before. I know who this is. I don't I don't want to go alone, but I'm dying to see that play and it's going to close. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, that would be nice. Thank you. Okay, well, he said, well, I'll call you. And I said, okay, okay, well, bye. <laughs> and I didn't know who I was talking to, who I said I'd go to the theater with. 
And that, it just so happened that afternoon, I had a date with the bad guy, the lawyer. The lawyer. <laughs> and we were sitting in a restaurant and this man across the way, I, I, I was w waving to a lady, but he thought I was waving at him yeah. and he had a beard. And I went, no, 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 her, you know. <laughs> but he got up and came to the table while the lawyer was in the men's room. And he said, <laughs> hi, Joyce. Um, he said, I guess you don't recognize me with the beard. It's Harry Ackerman. Did my friend Bill Asher call you? I said, oh, that's it. Harry Ackerman, Bill Asher, Harry Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> I said, thank God, thank God I ran into you because I thought his name was Harry Ashley. <laughs> I put the two together and he said, uh, I said, he invited me to the theater. I said, and Harry was a perfect gentleman. And I said, Harry, is, is he a gentleman? Oh, yes, a perfect gentleman. Oh, yes, don't worry about that at all. I think you'll have a great time. In the meantime, the lawyer's coming towards the table. <laughs> and I said, Thank you. Now I know. Thank you so much. So um, within a few days, he called and I knew who he was. Hi, how are you doing, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> he said, listen, about the date. And I said, mm -hmm. he said, um, I'm not an eight by 10 glossy <laughs> that you're probably used to dating. Yeah. He said, I'm bald. And I said, well, rent a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and when he came to the door, he was Bob, but I didn't know it. I, th I thought he was making a joke. <laughs> but I was finishing dressing, and my little girl, Mary, who was nine, <coughs> excuse me, went to the door. I was in the bedroom, and she opened the door and she said, Hey, mommy, wait till you see this bozo. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the beginning of quite a romance of three months. Three months later, walking down the aisle with eight children. Wow. <laughs> they were all in the wedding. You, you could have been in that movie Lucille Ball was in with Henry Fonda, yours, mine, and ours. <laughs> That's right. We didn't have ours, though. We just had yours and mine. You're exactly. <laughs> but John was kind of ours. Yes, exactly. What was it? What was the process like writing the book? It must have been very therapeutic and cathartic, very emotional, um, and and you know I think it's beautiful that you uh, and inspiring that you wrote it because, you know, not everybody would be so authentic and real and expressive and open as you are in the book. I think you are as a, as a person anyway, you know, no other way, which is a beautiful thing about you that I think people love Joyce, but Thank in you. writing the book, what was that process like? Were you hesitant well, at I all to, to reveal anything? It took 24 years to write it. 24 years. 24 yes. years in 1993. After Bill and I separated, we didn't divorce. I had no intention ever to divorce him. I loved him and I I just couldn't live with him and I wasn't helping his problem. So I thought if I if we were separated, maybe we could come together at some point. Um but then he found a lovely lady and and that was that was good because she yeah. was very good to him and 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 what he needed at that time. Um, the beginning of the book was called Home Sweet Home, Where Is It? Because when I was 50 years old, I sat down at the dining table and I was figuring out how many places I'd lived. And I had lived 50 places in 50 years. Wow. And now I'm 80. <laughs> no way. 84. And I no way. Yes way, and I probably lived <laughs> yes in, way. No I probably way. lived in seventy five houses now, and um, so that's what it was going to be about. Home sweet home, where is it? And about um, let me see, five years before I finished the book, I was still working on it, and uh, Roger was going through radiation therapy for cancer. 
And I got a call from a friend and he said, who's an author. And he said, Joyce, I have the title for your book. And I said, what is it? He said, my four Hollywood husbands. I said, are you kidding me? I would <laughs> never, ever call a book that. That's so embarrassing <laughs> and it's tacky and it's awful. But it might sell books. <laughs> but it might sell books, which is the other part of the whole thing, right? <laughs> so I thought if it's going to go in that direction, then I'm going to deal with alcoholism, codependency, and the effect it has on children. Yeah. And that way, it's not about me, and maybe it'll help people. Yeah. I mean, it is about me, but it's about the the disease that yeah. both people have. Right. And, and I am happy to say that when I would write a chapter, uh, I'm a terrible speller, and I get my thoughts backwards, and I, I have arrows all over when I write by hand. And Roger was so sweet. He would sit and read each chapter and correct it grammatically in the spelling. And then I'd go back to the computer and put it in properly. And he, I was so glad because he really got to see how deeply I loved him and how I carried him in my heart all those years before he died. And then when it came out, we did a, a road trip back east and did readings and um, book signings. Yeah. And at every one, he came and he would sit there with a big smile. I think he was so proud, but I would always introduce him and say, and this is my husband who's been sober for 24 years. And everybody would applaud. Oh, yeah. And I'm so happy that I got that chance to, to share that with him. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, uh, you even had an opportunity in your beautiful career, Joyce, to dance with the incomparable Fred Astaire. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> that was magnificent. My goodness, I, I couldn't believe it when my agent said, how would you like to do a show with Fred Astaire? I said, yeah, right, what are, why are you calling? <laughs> yeah, right. I, as a little girl, I went to all of his movies and he said, well, if you don't wanna do it. And I said, are you really serious? He said, yes, I'm serious and you get to dance with him. And I thought, oh, I could just imagine me in a beautiful chiffon ball gown and, you know, he'd lift me in the air in the ballroom and, oh, it'd be wonderful. Instead, it was the twist. <laughs> and he didn't know how to do it. And right before the scene, he dragged me, he said, Miss Bullifant, Miss Bullifant, please, will you teach me the twist? I don't know how to do it. And I said, Mr. Stare, you want me, me to, to teach, teach you a dance? So that was a thrill of my life. And it took him two seconds to learn it and um, master it and do it like the, the incredible dancer he was. And such a humble man, sweet yes. and loving, kind, uh, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mentioned also the fabulous movie career and all of the incredible stage work, as well as the the beloved television shows that you've had an opportunity to be a part of. Um, the Mary Tyler Moore show, I know, near and dear to your heart. And, uh, you know, really, uh, you're, I think, other than maybe John Amos, who I think played uh, the sports guy on the show, you're the remaining member of that Mary Tyler Moore family. And I know uh, those a... losses of Ed Asner and Mary Tyler Moore, Ted Knight earlier, and all of them, Clarice Leachman, Valerie Harper, everybody, Gavin McLeod, hits you hard. What was it like being a part of such an extraordinary cast and uh, such an extraordinary and beloved television series. What was that like for you? It, it was very exciting because you never had to go to the set and wonder, oh, is this going to be an awful script? We're going to have to try to make funny or do things or something to it. It was, it was the writers. They were incredible. And the cast brought their own special flavor to it. And um, 
as I was doing another show, I was doing the Bill Cosby show. I was playing a school guidance counselor and he was uh, a basketball coach. And then I was doing Love Thy Neighbor, another show I started right. with Ron Nasek. And so I would be away from the set and then come back. And each of these characters, the, the real people had become more the characters in the play, in the, in the show. I mean, they were, it was so funny. Ted Baxter said, uh, Ted Knight, said, yeah. acting like Ted Baxter said, Joyce, um, they decorated my dressing room. Would you like to see it? You know, it <laughs> and Valerie, Valerie was so sweet. And from the very first time I was on the show, she said, you want to run lines? And uh, I'll help you. And, and Betty, Betty White was so just the dearest person. And as everybody knows, but she even asked me to go on the road and do a show with Alan Ludden, her husband. Did she and really? And play a role that, um, that she, when she met him, she was playing that same role and asked me if I would do that. And I, I did, and it was fun. And uh, Gavin, Gavin lived around the corner here in the desert, and we did a lot of uh, benefits together. And I just, well, very, very special man. You know, I, you hear people say, I never heard that man say a, a word against anybody in my life. Well, this is very true about Gavin. He could not say an unkind word about mm -hmm. anyone. He yeah. just couldn't. He'd found the good in everybody and everything. Yeah. Look he at this a, beautiful photo we have on the screen. Oh, yes. That's a, that is uh, Roger in the middle. On the right is, um, is the man who played on Weird Science, a show that John starred in. And I played his mother, and he played his father. And then there's Gavin. Gavin on yeah. with sunglasses, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a, we, that's a wonderful we, shot. And there's you and Gavin as well there. Yes. That was funny. That day, we were with Ed Asner, whom I adored. Also, a big teddy bear, that guy. You know, he, he was great. He could be pretty gruff when he was with the Screen Actors Guild and at a union meeting. But he was so sweet to do a, a play Thomas Edison in a, a musical I did about dyslexia that I wrote and directed. Yeah. And he would do any, at the drop of a hat, he would show up at a fundraiser, a benefit for ch anything to do with children. He was yeah. just great. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And we just lost him recently uh, as well. You know, a lot of people and you see the reruns and, and everybody's hilarious on it. And it, 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 you know, it's one of those classic legendary game show series. And you were on it multiple times talking, of course, match game. But for you, the experiences and, you know, you share it as well. Um, match game was an interesting thing because it had a lot of the, uh, you know, the innuendo, the double <laughs> entendre. Which... I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> what innuendos? <laughs> what innu innuendo? <laughs> In whose window? <laughs> I know. I had to be very careful. And Betty White said, when I told a, a naughty joke, it sounds like a nursery rhyme. <laughs> So you, I you lot, and I Georgia Engel. Yeah. I, I tell a lot of naughty jokes. <laughs> but that experience was kind of interesting for you, uh, sort of behind the scenes, which you share as well, um, on a couple of different levels, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, do you look back at those years fondly uh, with the Match Game family? Oh yes, it was it was great fun. Yeah. It was a little difficult though because we shoot on Sunday afternoon. Oh, is that when they did I, it? Yeah, and I always wanted to be with the kids on Sunday afternoon, so I would take one one Sunday and then another one another Sunday. <laughs> but I couldn't let them come to dinner time because it was very risque. Um, <laughs> so they had to have dinner in my dressing room. 
uh, which is still not too bad. I mean, that's that's uh, an experience for them to. Oh, they were a little too young. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Walt Disney had passed away, and with him, plans and dreams for a series with Leslie Ann Warren and you, huh? Yeah. Wow. That was really fun. He was, he was delightful. He knew everything that went on in that studio because I had just had a baby and uh, I had just had Mary and um, I had to get in shape to do a, a, quite a difficult dance with Leslie Ann who's been dancing all her life. Yes. And I would go sneak into the studio and do warm-ups at the bar with the dancers in the show. And the first day on, on the set, my official day, he wrote a note to me and he said, I know this is your first official day. And I also know you've been sneaking on the set <laughs> <laughs> and practicing. And then he said, I have big plans for you, little lady. Then he died. Uh, that wasn't nice. That wasn't nice. He had the plans for you, but not the plans for him. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. So that, uh, and then that was that, uh, it, it couldn't go because of, uh, his, his passing, uh, unfortunately. Um, I'm really still... tired of everybody passing. I <laughs> tell you. Yes. Now, did, yeah. did you stay in touch with Leslie Ann Warren over the years? With Leslie Ann, I saw yeah. her, I was having lunch at Via, what's it called, Via, 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 uh, oh shoot, I always forget the name of, wonderful restaurant on Cannon in Beverly Hills, and she came out, Joyce, you know? yeah. and then we did a reunion, uh, we did uh, The Happiest Millionaire, we did uh, at Joe Papp's uh, yes. about five years, four or five years ago, five years ago. Yes. Take a look at this photo. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> That's something, huh? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Got another photo, too. You mentioned Alan Ludden. Look at this shot. Oh, yeah. How do you get that? How do you get these yeah, things? I tell you, I uh, I do my homework. <laughs> you really do. That's the play that, that Betty asked me to do with him. Yeah, huh? That's a great shot. What year was that? Do you remember, uh, recall? Are you kidding? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the late 80s, probably. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> in I the love... old-fashioned days. <laughs> yeah, in the old-fashioned days. Yes. And there you are with Gavin, of course. This is a wonderful shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the couch. Yeah. You know, uh, you also, and, and we, a few more things to chat about, but you also were, like I said, you know, America's sweetheart in so many different ways. You were this close to being Carol Brady on the Brady Bunch. Some people know that. Some people don't know that. I was signed, sealed, and delivered. You were that person, right? Tell us about that story. I was I was all set. I was, for two weeks, I went with the costume person to all the different departments and the stores in, in Beverly Hills and had my wardrobe. And Friday, before we we're going to shoot on Monday, I was showing the producer, Sherwood Schwartz, and um, the director, the clothes, and I come out and I'd say, this is what she wears for the garden wedding. And I twirl around and go back. And then the next I said, this is her going away suit that she wears after the wedding. Turn around. And I thought, this is weird because they're not saying anything. They're not saying like, well, what about a scarf? Or what about different yeah. shoes? Or what Have you met they the never, cast they yet? Never the just, kids or... Yep. or uh, and B. Davis, did you meet, or Robert Reed, did you meet all of them already? Right. They never say, oh, okay. <laughs> they just don't. And um, so I, I came out and I said, is something wrong? And they said, sit down. They said, ABC in New York has just found out that Florence Henderson is available and they would like her to do it but we're fighting for you because we've written it like the Lucy show we want. And if Florence does it, it'll be more like the Donna Reed show. We have to recast the housekeeper to be the 
the funny one and Florence the straight one. And we have to redo the everything. All the little girls were cast to look like me. And um, they, they said, we're going to fight like hell, but we'll know later tonight. And they were really down in the mouth. And I just thought, wow, I'd already signed a contract for seven years. Yeah, seven <laughs> and, years. Um, yeah. And Sherwood, bless his heart, instead of calling, he came to the house mm -hmm. and told me. Yeah. And I don't know, I've, I've always thought in this business, you just have to go along and, and accept Whatever happens, happens. I had two little children. I was divorced then. And what should I have? Oh, that was, that <laughs> was. <laughs> what can I add for you? <laughs> you know what that is, Alexa? Alexa, stop. Oh, Alexa's talking? Yes. To you? <laughs> yeah. Out of the blue. Oh, it's a male voice? So it's, it's not Alexa, it's Alex? <laughs> <laughs> That what what is, what is he saying? So what? I don't know. Between your voice and Alexa, the Daffy Duck and Alexa, you got all kinds of stuff in your head right now, huh? Wow, that is fun. <laughs> it's really fun talking to Donald Duck. I tell you, but so uh, so Sherwood came over and he told you, and and that must, yeah. must have and been. And the rest is history. And yes. she was wonderful. The show yeah. was great, and yeah. um. She is a lovely lady. She was a lovely yeah, lady. Yeah. So I just went on to have my own Brady Bunch, my real live Brady Bunch. Yes. And, uh, and doing other things. And everything works out for the best. It Always really, does. Yeah. And in this business, you've got to look at it that way. You can't dwell on, on what you didn't get. I mean, I was supposed to be in the Beverly Hillbillies. I was, um, I auditioned for that when I auditioned for a pilot that Roger Perry was in. And um, my agent called, I got the Beverly Hillbillies and the other one, and I had to make a decision, which one? And my agent said, oh, Lord, a show about hillbillies coming to Beverly Hills, it'll <laughs> never go. Take the other show. <laughs> and if I hadn't, I wouldn't have met Roger. So everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. And, you know, of course, during that time period and even beyond, you were almost, you know, the it girl for lots of TV commercials as well, which is kind of cool. Yes. yes. Things like Crest. Oh, here comes trouble, Pop. Mr. Goodwin, you got my order wrong. I didn't order Crest. No, a smart girl like you, Sarah. No. Well, you should. Why Crest? Because Crest fights cavities. But I don't get many cavities. Maybe you don't. But your little Lucy was in this morning. Told me about her cavities. Oh, yes. But Crest? All toothpaste are the same. Uh-uh. Crest has fluoride. Yours doesn't. Fluoride's the best cavity fighter you can get. Right, Mary? Oh, yes, Sarah. Mr. Goodwin convinced us about Crest. That fluoride really works. You know why checkups have been much better. Now I feel guilty about my Lucy. Never too late to start. Thanks, Mr. Goodwin. You take care of Lucy now. She's the only one you've got so far. <laughs> Crest is accepted by the American Dental Association. Is Crest fighting cavities in your family? Never too late to start. And if you weren't uh, using Crest, you were home watching your Quasar TV. Johnny's on television. Oh, as she true. Oh, where? As she It's just beautifully red, white, and you'll see it clear because Quasar makes television special again. Our new shorter Dynabrite tube makes a smaller dot for Quasar's sharpest, clearest picture yet. You'll see more. He needs the haircut. He does. I'd never even seen that one. I forgot <laughs> all about it. And, oh and then sometimes, you know, you would hang out with uh, Bernie Capel, of course, who we know from a lot of great shows. And uh, you guys were talking soap. I smell clean. 
I smell clean. Ho, ho, ho. With life, boy, I smell clean. Hey, Adonis. Oh, uh. Any soap will get you clean. Honey, it's not enough to be clean. You gotta smell clean. That's why I use Life Boy. So I smell clean. Life Boy deodorant soap. It's not enough to be clean. You gotta smell clean. Hey, you really do smell clean. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I guess who directed that? Who directed that? And when I came on the set, he said, Don't you tell a soul. Jay Sandwich, who directed the Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> he was moonlighting. He was moonlighting. And, yeah. of course, we know you love animals and you love Purina. Cat food. My cats prefer these little cans. They're meatier. <laughs> but they're expensive. So with two cats, I'll also buy the tall cans. They're cheaper. Get together with new Love and Spoonfuls. The rich goodness of small cans. They love it. At a really sensible price. I love it. Love and Spoonfuls. Tender little chunks that cats really love at an everyday sensible price. Get together with Love and Spoonfuls. New from Purina. So many incredible things that you've done in your career. And of course, you know, you could do one or two commercials and people remember you from being that person in the commercial. It's amazing the power of commercials, huh? Yes, it is. I remember one day I was at the market and this little boy pointed at me and he said, look, mommy, look, it's the cat food lady. <laughs> and I thought, I can't believe it. I've done Broadway. I've done yeah. movies. I've done Dance it. with Fred Astaire. I don't remember cat food. <laughs> That's why. <what. laughs> it's okay. It's nice to be remembered. That's exactly right. Exactly. Um, you also, and again, we're talking about the extraordinary book that she's penned, My uh, Four Hollywood Husbands. You were um, forbid to tell Sam Waterston he was being replaced as your husband on Broadway, huh? That made me so sad. He was so wonderful in that role. And I kind of had a crush on him. And um, I was forbidden by the producer and the director to tell him that he was going to be replaced. And uh, it was a terrible, terrible situation for me to be in. But I had been taught since I was 14 in the theater that the director's word is God. No matter what anybody else says, you listen to the director. And I thought I, I, he was very, very angry with me because I didn't tell him. And uh, I, to this day, I've not, never been able to, to tell him what happened and how so extraordinary happy I am that he's had such a wonderful career. I mean, it's mm. just, he's a great actor and he deserved everything that he's been handed um, yeah. and worked for. And uh, it was just, it, it was devastating to me that I've, if you ever see him, would you tell him how, how awful I felt all these years no. not to be able to tell him what happened? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, also, and again, you, you, you're such a beautiful person inside and out and so open because these, the people that are consuming the book, they might have things in their lives too, that they're struggling with and how open you are and authentic in the book is very inspiring to, to other people. You even talk about, you know, as a little girl feeling lost and sad, placed in orphanage and foster homes as well. That must have been obviously very difficult to deal with as a young girl. Well, I, I don't think it, um, I, I, I've been asked about that before and I think about it and there were times I was sad but I always felt sorry for the other children. There you go again. <laughs> you I was could have worked as a them. nurse. You're, you're definitely, you've got a caring soul, an empathetic soul. You know, earlier you said as far as with the husbands, that ego, I, I don't think it's ego. I think it's caring. I think you're a caretaker. I think you're empathetic and you really 
have this, uh, it's called emotional intelligence. It's the ability to feel other people's pain. It's the ability to really empathize with them. And I think that's really the definition of Joyce, not really the ego. I think it's just you're very, very high, you're a high level empath is what they call it, which is a beautiful thing. You feel other people's struggle and their strife and their pain. And as much as writing the book is therapeutic in a way and, and entertaining, uh, it, it's a wonderful way to connect to people and sort of help them through their struggles in life as well. Thank you, because that's exactly what I I wanted to do. And uh, I've got three other books in mind to do. Oh, good. And, I, uh, and they're all about trying to help other people. One is about... Um, helping someone go through their transition from this world to the next. Yes. And the other is about dyslexia. And the other is my very own personal kind of, it always sounds so corny to say spiritual ex experiences. No, it's a but, beautiful thing. No, yes. But yeah. I've had so many incredible things happen you know and people say oh yeah it's just coincidence and I what would be one maybe that comes to mind that stands out very strongly for you as a spiritual experience that's a beautiful thing to have it's a gift well uh, one of the things is when roger was uh going through his transition and i was taking care of him i said one day we have to have a sign that i know you're okay yes and, and he said that's a good idea and he he said, what should it be? And I said, a maple leaf. Just send me the sign of a maple leaf, then wow. I know you're okay. Wow. And um, if you read the book, you'll know why yeah. I said a maple leaf. Yeah. But um, so many times when I was feeling, oh, God, so lost, someone would come to the house. They didn't know this. Uh, right after he died, of a friend of a friend of mine that I knew had gone to Vermont and said, here, I just want to give this to Joyce. You know, give, will you give this to her when you see her? And it was maple syrup in the shape of a bottle in the shape of a maple leaf. Wow. And it was right when I just, I knew that it was okay. And then another time, one of those down times, a friend was coming to dinner and he said, I brought you these cookies from Trader Joe's and they were cookies shaped, they're maple cookies shaped like a maple leaf. I've had and those. He's... They're delicious. They're addictive. <laughs> Have you they're had good. them? They're good. Yes. They they're very know, good. They didn't know the meaning, what that would mean to me. And then um, up in Aspen where I put his ashes up on top of Aspen Mountain, I came down and my uh, daughter-in-law said, oh, come, I want you to see, come to this craft shop. There's a beautiful quilt I want you to see. And I thought, I don't, I wasn't in the mood, but I said, oh, okay. And I went in, it was this beautiful cobalt green quilt and it had fish. It was all underwater and it had fish swimming and, and uh, seahorses and maple leaves. Wow. And it just kept happening. It hasn't happened a lot lately. Um, also, when I had to turn over his ashes when I was taking them up to Aspen, and I had them in a box, and they said what it was and everything, but the um, security people had to had to take the box and and it was an awful moment. That moment that I handed a security man, his ashes, and the whole idea of it. And I I literally thought I was going to pass out right yeah. there in line. And I grabbed the counter and looked down, and there was a penny. And it was Roger's daughter who told me this, because I always thought you pick up a penny for good luck. And she said, no, 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 that means someone in heaven is thinking about you. And I just went, thank me <laughs> that. I got over that faint feeling, and uh, but it's it's happens. I was on the golf course the other day, walking with my son, and I looked down, and there was a 
a maple leaf, a dried maple leaf, and there are no maple trees here that <laughs> I've seen in the desert. In Palm Springs. It, yeah. it just it just keeps happening. Mm. And I had under in church underneath his box of his ashes, they were on top of the maple leaves from our our tree. Those are definitely signs, aren't they? They're signs. He's watching over you. He's watching I get, over. I truly, I, I feel his presence. I keep yes. thinking, you know, you do that. You could say, oh, I've got a call. Well, I have to make sure he, oh, you know, and you go, oh. Yeah. But it, uh, sometimes I just, I just put out my hand and I feel the weight of his hand in mine. You know, it just, I have his bathrobe. I can't give it up. And when I need a hug, I go and I, I have put the hang up and the arms of the bathroom around me. Yeah, just absolutely. There. Yes. No, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the book is titled more my four Hollywood husbands, but when you look back at it all, was he the love of your life? Yeah. He was the one. Yeah. But you know, there are all kinds of love. Right. All kinds. And each one of those husbands had a special love from me, but Roger was the complete package. <laughs> right, exactly. It, it beautifully said. Um, we have this wonderful photo I wanted to show too. Look at that. Oh this my goodness. Like it did like a painting or something of you. What was that, Jerry? Uh, it was, a, there's a theater here in the desert called uh, CV Rep. Yeah. And I walked in the theater one day and I went, Wait a minute, that's me. That's you. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of like walking into Sardis. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I like I like it was a big surprise. Absolutely. All the viewers are commenting. They say they love you very much and they've followed you for years and you look like a million bucks as well. <laughs> oh, which is that's fantastic. Nice. Um and then we have this. You this actually um was from a project that you did. Tell us oh. about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I look like Queen, Queen Victoria. Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> yes. What was that role? Do you remember what this was? It's a very naughty movie um, <laughs> that my son directed. That your son directed. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's, it's based, it's a, it's a takeoff on Liam Neeson's movies, Taken. Oh, yes. And this movie's called Took Him. <laughs> <laughs> and I play his Irish mother yes. with a very, very naughty mouth. <laughs> and some words I had to say, I'd say to John, honey, what does this mean? He said, mom, don't ask, just say Don't it. ask, just say <laughs> the word. <laughs> All the words when he was a kid, he was not allowed to say. <laughs> now you say them. <laughs> right. It's a little bit of a role reversal there, huh? <laughs> of all it was fun. Roles, I, love, I love working with him. He's a, oh, a really you, good director. Do you get to do that a lot? Do you get, a chance, do, do you get a chance to work with him a lot? Uh, I have had several. He usually puts me in his movies for good luck, he said. I said, not because I'm a great actress. <laughs> <laughs> he so much wants to find something for for me, particularly to star in. That's fantastic. He, he keeps looking for something. I said, we're going to have to write it. Yes. You know, of, of all the roles that you've played, do you have one or two that are, I mean, you've done so much, Joyce Bullifant. Uh, are there, is there one or two that is your personal favorites? Uh, well, I love doing the musical, The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Yes. I really had so much fun doing that for a whole uh, three months of the summer in Kansas City. And I rented a house and uh, Mary and John were both in it. They had small little roles they did. And... Uh, and I got to sing and dance. And and then afterwards, I got to sit on the edge of the stage and talk to the audience. And I, I love that. I mean, because that's, 
that's what it's all about is that connection with the audience yes absolutely right absolutely um what are some of those continued blessings and joys in your life that propel you to keep doing what you do and you, you know, i mean you've been listing a few of them i've I, noticed well, your I, children I think, and family I think, um i like working and i i love i really do love to work and but i love the fact that it gives you a platform to help other <laughs> to help other people uh, yeah. roger and i started a center in Glenwood Springs, Colorado for abused children. And next to my children, that's probably the thing that I'm most proud of. And also it gave me a voice to, to talk about dyslexia and, and create awareness. Uh, I started a public awareness program for dyslexia and I spoke all over the United States. And that's the other book that I have these letters from young dyslexic children talking about how they feel. And um, I thought that would make a wonderful book because a lot of people don't understand that hurt. And um, that's, that's the other book. <laughs> that's beautiful. That is wonderful that you want to do that. Um, do you like mentoring others too? You obviously love, you know, inspiring people. Have you ever, uh, toyed with teaching at all? Well, I do. Um, here in the desert, I um, <clears throat> I sort of teach and put on a show with children to raise money for after school programs for the for the arts for oh. for writing and dancing and singing and acting. And uh, I love doing that. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful, huh? When yeah. you look back at all of this, it's uh, you've had quite a ride and continue to have quite a ride, but yet at the same time, you're surrounded by loving family. You have the children, you have, you know, you have the love of the public, and then you have the real deep love of your children and your family. And that's really nice, isn't it? I think you've even done some videos oh. with your son cooking and doing a lot of different things, which yes. is fun, isn't it? It's great. I feel truly blessed and I'm very, very grateful. I've had an incredible life. It's just hard to believe. I have to pinch myself sometime to believe everything that that I've done and the people I've met and the situations I've been in, good and bad. They've all they've all made me and and I've even for the first time in my life I'm I'm okay being by myself with my little dog, Violet. Where's Violet? Yeah, Violet. where's Violet? Yeah, they love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have a little dog that is so sweet. And um, we've taken road trips together. And uh, just, it's, I'm, I'm okay now. For a while, I had to be going and doing all the time. And I was getting kind of exhausted from it all. And then when COVID hit, that kind of helped me settled down. And then I moved back to Colorado after COVID. I wanted to be near my uh, two adult children and grandchildren up there. And I wanted to be more in nature. I love weather. I love the snow. And I had a house on a mountaintop and my neighbors were 18 deer. They wow. came every evening to eat what was in my garden. They thought it was their buffet table. I go, no, <laughs> no, it's mine. Go away. But I loved it. And when I'd hear the weatherman say it was going to snow, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and open the draperies and look out to see if it had started. Like I, get it so did. I get so excited. Yeah. And, um, and then something extraordinary happened. My blood pressure went sky high. I think it was two things. I think I had put off grieving. Yes. And... Um, I, I did everything after Roger passed away. I moved, I gave all of his clothes to his children and everything. And I thought uh, one day I opened the closet door and his clothes weren't there. And I screamed and fell to my knees and couldn't breathe. And my daughter and a friend came running. They thought I'd cut my arm off, it felt like it. And I thought, I can't go there. I cannot, if I climb into that 
dark hole, I'm not going to be able to climb out. And so I set off selling the house, going on a road trip with the dog, going to Yosemite, going to Montana to see a friend, going on a cruise. I kept busy, busy, busy and exhausted, exhausted, yes. but I kept going. Kept and going. Um, then when I got to Colorado, <clears throat> where we had lived so happily and walked to the village in the snow, to the coffee shop and started the, the Center for the Abused Children and had written a musical together. I mean, everything was so idyllic there and picture perfect. And um, it got, it hit hard, that grief. Yeah. And I really felt alone and it, it was very hard to go through. And I think that made my blood pressure go up as well as the altitude, the two combi combined. But it went sky high three times. And uh, my daughter and son said, you're out of here. You cannot live here. I'm sorry. You got to go back to the desert. And I thought, I don't like the desert. It doesn't have weather. All it has is wind. And it's just, <laughs> it has ugly cactus. And I don't like that. I like pine trees. And I like deer. And I like snow. And I like wind and rain and all that. And... You should live I, in Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, I love Connecticut. Well, I went to school in Bucks County. That's right. And that's very like Connecticut. Yeah. But I can't move again. Oh my God, I, I am exhausted yeah, from moving. You've done, you've done a this lot. This is really the perfect place, but I said I can't live in the desert unless I can look at water and mountains. If I can't look at water and mountains, yeah. and even a pool, I, I can't do it. And it's right when all the prices were sky high. Yes. And all of a sudden, I, I was looking at houses, but they'd sell in a day. And you had to give them all cash and no contingencies. And I thought, I'm not going to do that. And then I thought, do I really want a house all by myself again? Right. And all that responsibility. And all of a sudden, I thought, wait a minute. I know where there's water, and I know where there are mountains. And it's those three apartment buildings called Desert Island. Yes. And I came here, there was only one apartment for sale and it was perfect for me and my view, can you really see it? Yeah, let's see it. Can you see it? Oh my God. I love it. What a beautiful room that is. There's Thank windows you. everywhere. Yeah. A happy room. Oh, there's Violet. Oh, I love Violet. it. Say hi, Violet. There's Violet. Hey, Violet. <laughs> She's very cozy, but I've got uh, this huge terrace. Wow, this is beautiful. It goes all the way down there. Oh, wow. And all of this, and over here. Boy, it looks like a postcard. That Isn't is gorgeous. There's wow. my pool that I don't have to care for. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, it's really, I'm, I'm. I you're in perfect. you're in heaven. You're in heaven. Yes. It is. But I love Connecticut. Come on, Violet. Well, Come the on. lighting on you right there is spectacular. <laughs> I really lucky. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Look at it. It's beautiful, huh? That's a picture of Roger and me in Paris. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you're, you've got a beautiful, comfortable home surrounded with love. And, and look at all the window views. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. I'm very lucky. And the children come to see me. We all have Thanksgiving together. You also worked very hard for it. Nothing came easy for Joyce Boulevard. I mean, you worked hard. I know you may say, oh, well, things came my way. But you worked very hard. And, you know, the industry, the longevity like you have in an industry as unpredictable and crazy as these industries that you and I are in, uh, that takes resilience and you're, you're a comeback kid. I mean, no matter what came your way, you found ways to come back and to work through it, which is really inspiring, Joyce. I think it has a lot to do with faith. Yes. And, and liking people, yes. you know, that, that I, I love people. I know you do. And I and I have great faith. So I think that helps a lot. What would you say to somebody watching right now who may be going through something similar where they've just suffered 
a great loss. I mean, in the last two years, we've seen so much loss with the, mm. the pandemic and all. But as somebody who, you know, has been dealing with it at this level, and then, you know, it sort of hits hard and the blood pressure goes up. What would you say to somebody maybe who's going through something similar right now and they feel scared and alone and stuck and they don't know what to do? And they're saying, boy, if if Joyce Boulafont can continue to smile and inspire others and she can get through to a degree, maybe I can too. What would you say to them? I would say take a deep breath and be still. And I guess the saying, be still and know that I am. Know that there is a greater energy, spirit, loving creator, divine creator, God, whatever you want to call, what makes flowers and trees and babies and mountains. And just be grateful for that you have a roof over your head, food on the table. You think about where you can help other people. I think that's very important. Look, there, there's always somebody who's going to be less fortunate than you are, that you can reach out to them and know that you're never, ever alone. There's always, no matter how people look as if they're on top of the world, they still have their problems. And but just to be grateful that you're alive, even though life is very difficult sometimes. Yeah. And I, I understand that. And I don't understand and I feel sad for people who who can't look for the bright side and the positive side. And it's really hard sometimes, especially if you don't have food on the table or you're working three jobs and you have children that are crying and screaming. That's why take a deep breath and just find space for yourself and love yourself. And uh, I think you'll do fine. This is like I said in the beginning, you're a beautiful person inside and out, Joyce Boulafont. And that's yes. why everybody loves you and everybody, you know, uh, just has this wonderful connection to you as they've had over all of these years. Your, your family is blessed to, as much as you are to have you in their lives. And uh, you're, you're not only a great entertainer but, and a great uh, performer, but you're a beautiful soul. And I think that's what has shined through all of the work. There's a lot of people that do this kind of work, but you've created, carved out this niche. And I think it's because of the heart centric way, the heartfelt way you've always gone through and have applied to everything that you do. And people pick up on that. You know, you don't even have to say it out loud that you're doing it that way, but it's something that people have picked up this vibe from you in the work that you've done. And that's a beautiful thing. Well, that is more than kind of you to say, thank you. Oh, it's true. I, I'm a heart centric guy myself. So it's, uh, you know, I, know, I know how it is and I identify with it. You're extraordinary. And this was really a very beautiful conversation. We saw a little tour of the, the home, the patio, <laughs> and we went down uh, memory lane. And of course the, the book, again, near and dear to your heart. I, I'm sure there are more books, you know, in the offing, maybe even something dealing with grief and loss uh, could be something to discuss as well. But there's the book there, folks. We thoroughly encourage you to get it, Amazon and everywhere, my four Hollywood husbands. And, and somebody that uh, usually joins along towards the latter part of the show, uh, Joyce, just wanted to pop in and say hello. Mr. George Burns is with us. Who's that? George Burns. Who is it? <laughs> George Burns. <laughs> of course. How are you, George? <laughs> yeah, he's doing well. <laughs> he's got his cigar. He gives you his love. How'd and you, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Yes. Isn't that cool? Um, he sounds better than you do, Daffy Duck. <laughs> I was going to say, I know my audio to you during this broadcast. I sound like Daffy Duck somehow in the desert there. It's translating weird, but uh, he's here. He sends his love. And he said that up in heaven, he was just golfing with Roger 
and everything is okay. And everything is okay. He's up Thank with Roger. You. Thank you. Yeah. He's, uh, remember when he played God in the movie as well? Good old George Burns, another classic legend. Yeah. Um, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, Joyce, and you enjoyed the time as much as I absolutely have with you. I did, Jim. Thank you. I, especially listening to your voice. Didn't I do well not to crack up all the way through? <laughs> I wish, I just wish you could hear how it sounds. I, and you heard the real voice because we were on the phone before we went live, right? You yes, heard, right. You, you heard my voice, my low, deep voice, but. No, I think this is the real you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you say it's it's your voice times two? <laughs> Quick question. <laughs> You know, have you ever done voices uh, of animated characters? I absolutely love yes. it. And I, I've not been asked to do it again, and I love doing it. I did um, one for Filmation called Sport Billy. And you have to be able to do five different voices. Yes. And I didn't know I could do that. But once I got the script, I just fell into all these different characters. And they said, but you can't play the evil queen we're gonna have to get someone to do that i said well let me try it and so i did and i i'd say skype get in here skype <laughs> they said oh my god you can do it <laughs> but everybody would come and watch me because i couldn't do it unless i did all these evil things <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun i loved it oh that is so i that is fantastic. That is so funny. I, I just wanted to show you really quickly some beautiful comments that are coming in live from our viewers. Maureen is in Arizona. And uh, thank you. She just did one of our super chats. Thank you so I much, put Maureen. put my glasses on for this. She says, Joyce, what a wonderful journey your life has been. My wish for you is that the best is yet to come. Thank you for sharing your adventures with us. God bless you, beautiful lady. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank Isn't you, Maureen. Dwight says, Joyce is just full of happy sunshine and very cheerful. <laughs> I agree 100%. Anne Thank is you. watching in Florida, in Jacksonville, and Wozniak. And she says, what a wonderful evening this is. And uh, thank you, Joyce and Jim, and sending love and hugs. Thank you, Anne. We so appreciate nice. that. Sherry Larson is watching in Kansas, USA. Thank you, Joyce, for being here with us tonight and sharing your life with us and sharing your wonderful relationship with Roger. Blessings to you and all that you do, which is That's really, so really nice. beautiful. Toby Thank is watching in Encino, California. She says, what a great time here going down memory lane. <laughs> I sure don't feel like I'm 61 watching this now. Very youthful vibes are running off. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yes. Dwight says, Joyce, thank you for all the needed support from your TV years. You are truly a legend. Oh. And Mary Bishop in Florida in our show says, wonderful conversation tonight. Thanks, Jim and Joyce. Nice. David Matthew Barnes. Good to see you, David. Welcome to the show. This was wonderful. Kathleen oh Walker in New York City. These are all of our lovety viewers the gym master show loveities joyce oh, they they have to know about coming to nyack october yes 7th, 8th, and right 9th. absolutely and uh and hopefully i'll see you uh in the city in manhattan uh, in april right soon in april yeah, give so me a call give i have call. i have that phone number yeah i will do uh kathleen walker says joyce thank you for being here she's in new york city thank you for <laughs> being here you're awesome she oh. absolutely loves you uh nikki says it's been lovely having you joyce and merlin watching in ontario canada says you take care joyce with claps and hearts uh. yes and uh, mona greer watching in uh, new orleans well as uh, louisiana says enjoyed your story so nice meeting you joyce thanks jim and joyce what a great show tonight oh my uh, this was a fantastic conversation joyce as well 
and uh, Tuto. Good to see you, Tuto. Amazing show. What a blessing. And thank you. And Jane watching. In, Jane's watching in Sweden, and she says, "Ah, such a cutie." And that's <laughs> <you>. <laughs> Beautiful. Those are so nice. How yeah, sweet. that's what we that's what happens on our show almost every night. Uh, and I absolutely love it. Uh, Joyce, thanks so much for being here. I, again, I hope to uh, see you soon. Uh, yes, break bread. Give me a call. I'll be in New York a few days. I look forward to that. And you're you're the you're the very best. Uh, you haven't changed a bit. It's that heart and soul inside you that makes uh the world of difference and you really are a ray of sunshine. So you keep doing you and uh, spreading that sunshine. And we absolutely loved having you on the show. Thank you, Jim. Thank <laughs> you very much. You're welcome. You take care now. You be well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Daffy now. Duck. Daffy <laughs> Duck. When you see me in person, you'll hear a different voice. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye now. Incomparable Joyce Boulafont. It's funny. She mentioned the Daffy Duck because for some reason where she is there in Palm Springs, her audio, what she's hearing coming through, which is my voice, somehow there's a sound that's making it sound like a Daffy Duck sound. <laughs> she said, my voice sounds like hers on steroids. <laughs> Don't know what it is, but something in the translation on her end, which is funny. But when she sees this whole broadcast uh, in full, you know, because the guests like to watch the archives, too. And we love that about our guests. Um, she'll hear it all. But we, we also chatted on the phone and I'll be chatting with her after the show, too. We chatted on the phone uh, because, you know, where she is there in the desert, uh, she wasn't getting a signal and, and her browser wasn't working. Uh, in tandem with our system. So we wanted to make sure everything was perfect beforehand, but uh, something else, huh? Something else. She really is uh, a national treasure on so many levels. And uh, here's another great shot as well with Roger, her beloved Roger. And there's Gavin McLeod on the left, who of course, you know, from the love boat, who was Captain Steubing, the love boat. And uh, she played his wife on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Mm -hmm. really great shots and again we we showed some footage of some classic commercials that she was in this really was just scratching the surface she danced with fred astaire here's another great shot of the incomparable hollywood legend joyce bullifant here on the jim masters show live actress author Boy, when you watch the uh, decades and Me TV and Cozy TV and Buzzer and all those and Game Show Network, you see her on all the different game shows over the years, Match Game, Crosswoods, Password, and so many others. And there she is with, with Roger, which she talks so fondly about on the show today. Gavin McLeod, of course, from Mary Tyler Moore Show and Love Boat. And that's another great shot with the two of them. She's worked with the greats. She's one of the greats herself. We're talking about Joyce Boulafont, actress, TV legend, author of that book, My Four Hollywood Husbands. Wasn't this a refreshing and real and authentic conversation? You see, on the Jim Master Show Live, we don't do interviews. They're conversations, and we let it flow. There's no scripted questions. The guests have no idea what I'm going to ask, what I'm going to ask it, what we're going to show. We just let it roll because I think, and I love that just because I think it makes it more real and connecting and relatable and more authentic. And uh, that's the way I've always done it, you know, over the years in my professional work on television and radio, she's really fantastic. This is, that was her second time with us as well. She was with us before we had a fantastic conversation. The last time she was on the show, it was very funny because she had some connection issues, you know, with her Wi-Fi, and uh, she was holding her phone the whole time, and literally holding her phone. And sometimes, you know, she had to move around a little bit. So it almost, I said, "Are you on a cruise ship? And is there a wave coming hitting the boat?" It was hilarious. Uh, you can see the uh, first episode of the Gym Master Show live, where Joyce Bullifant. 
uh, was with us. Not the first episode of our series, but the first episode that uh, the lovely Joyce Boulafont was on. So this is her return visit. A lot of the guests, you know, they really enjoy themselves and the time with me and all of you that they want to come back on the show. And uh, I'm very honored uh, and very respectful of that. I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, when the guests want to return, that's something special. And when you watch and you return, that's special too. And that helps us grow. There's over, there's, we're just shy of 650 episodes live seven days a week. And it's amazing. Mona says, you are fantastic too, Jim. Thanks for this great show of love ease. You bring together hugs and love from Louisiana. Thank you, Mona. I appreciate that right back at you. You are very special as well. Maureen says, this has just been just the greatest Thursday since last week. Thank you, Jim, for having Joyce as your special guest. What a fun walk back through time. I appreciate that, Maureen. Really, really beautiful. Um, really fantastic. You guys are the best. All these great comments from our lovely squad. Dwight's been saying uh, she reminds him of Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank with that hairstyle. That's cool. Linda was here watching as well. Uh, Mr. Levity, sweet dreams, you too. And Tuto, hey Tuto, watching in New Jersey. Hello all. To all my love and blessings, Tuto is a class act. Uh, he and I have worked professionally together in television. And he's a really good-hearted, faith-based guy. Uh, he, he's a, a producer, a music engineer, and also a minister as well. And he's a good, dear friend. Mona says, she's a beautiful lady inside and out. Like you said, Jim, beautiful pictures. Absolutely. Sharp as a tack, Toby. Absolutely right. Nikki says, that's pretty unique, Jim, but I guess she will always remember. Thanks for the show. Thank you very much for being with us, Nikki, as well. Sherry Larson says, thank you, Jim, for having Joyce tonight. What a wonderful and sweet lady. She's a legend. You've seen her on game shows, commercials, television shows, movies, and... Um, She's the best. Just just Google her name and you'll see all the things that she's been in. And again, we just scratched the surface. We could spend hours with her um, to really talk about her entire career. We love you, Joyce, from Jane in Sweden. Also sang Lovely House. That was a surprise when she got up and she took us on a tour, a little mini tour of her house. I thought that was really, that was a cool surprise because I know you guys like that sometimes when the guests take us on a tour uh, I feel a little bit like Edward R. Murrow, that show, that classic CBS show where he's sitting in the chair with the cigarette, with the big screen, person to person, and he'd be in the chair relaxed. And now we're going to the home, lovely home in Beverly Hills of Jerry Lewis and family or Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz and family and, uh, and so much more. Speaking of Lucy Arnaz, Lucy Arnaz is going to be coming on the show as a guest. Yes, we're putting that together now and I'm very excited about that. So stay tuned. And uh, she's on tour right now. She's a dear friend. She's on tour. She's knocking him dead with her new, uh, she, she wanted to get back out there, you know, for such a long time. And, um, and you know, pandemic sort of slowed that down, put it on pause, but she's back out there. And uh, you're a communicator. You listen, Cynthia Ray. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, I really like to deeply listen and find little connections when I'm listening. When when you see a guest on and I'm just listening, I'm not saying anything, all cylinders are firing and the adrenaline is really high because I'm deeply listening. And I'm also looking for ways to connect the audience, the viewers, the listeners, and connect myself with the guest. I'm looking for little things that the guest they're they're expressing that I might identify with as well. You too, like the the Trader Joe's maple cookies. I've had those and they're addictive. I don't think they're out all the time because Trader Joe's tend I have a friend that works at Trader Joe's, so we have an in. But uh, sometimes, you know, they have certain things out for a limited time and then it goes away and then sometimes they bring it back. But um those cookies are good. And, and what a I'll, next time we have those Trader Joe's maple cookies, I'm going to think of Joyce Boulafont and the messages coming from Roger from, from above. That was really beautiful. And she was so open. 
as she she normally is, so open and real and authentic. And you know, you don't always get that in entertainment and in celebrity and in Hollywood or Broadway or or any of these um, you know fields of endeavor. You don't always get authentic and real. But uh, with Joyce, she's a straight shooter. And she's she's funny too, isn't she? <laughs> she's absolutely funny. Really cool, cool person. And uh, you got a chance maybe to learn a little bit more about her that you you didn't know about previously. Here's that book again. My four Hollywood husbands. It's riveting. It's a page turner. You're gonna love it. Check that out, gang. It's a great one. We have so many extraordinary guests that are coming up. I'm so excited. Hey, if you if you love the television characters, Marion Ross was a guest on our show. She Would you believe she's 93 now? You wouldn't believe it when you see that episode she was on. It's archived on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. She played Mrs. Cunningham on Happy Days. Do you know on Saturday night, her son is going to be with us? Yes. Extraordinary impressionist and comedian, voice artist. And son of actress Marion Ross, Jim Meskim is going to be here. He's hilarious. He does so many extraordinary voices of celebrities and characters and animation. And he's a great guy. He's going to be with us as well. You know, on Sunday, special afternoon show, family of the Bee Gees, the legendary Bee Gees, Cousins Gibb. They're an actual fantastic musical group, singers, songwriters. Their cousins, Nick Endicott Gibb, is the son of Maurice Gibb, one of the Bee Gees. Yes. You know, it was Robin and uh, Barry and Maurice. <clears throat> and of course, their brother, Andy Gibb. Well, uh, Maurice is the son of, uh, or Nick is the son of Maurice, and his cousin is Deborah. And they are incredible. They actually did an updated version of the BG song Tragedy. They're here on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, that's going to be 7 p.m. in the UK. That's right. If you didn't see when Glenn Scarpelli was here, check that episode out. It's on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, another television legend from one day at a time. He was also very open and very authentic in the conversation that we had. That was his second time on our show. Uh, and he's become a, a dear friend. Tomorrow night, speaking of friends, a dear friend of mine as well, Giada Valenti, who's originally from Venice. We actually worked together on a PBS television special a few years back from Venice with Love. Uh, we went to Italy. Uh, I hosted uh, the segments, and then I did a lot of the work with uh, PBS on the special. And uh, she's a wonderful person as well. And she has a new song out, a concert coming up in Las Vegas. She's a dear friend as well. She's going to be with me tomorrow night, live from Las Vegas as well, which is going to be um, exciting. Those are just some of the guests that are coming through the Gym Master Show Live. And there's so many more. Can't say who yet because we're still you know, finalizing uh, my schedule. Because I work this show, even though we're on like at a consistent time, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Sometimes we do afternoon shows. Sometimes we do, do double levity, which means two shows in one day. Sometimes I work it around, you know, schedule of family uh, events, as well as my career, my busy career in television and radio that takes me on location or I'm in the studio or because uh, I host a lot of different shows and different things. So uh, we work around all that and we do that with the guests as well. So, but, but to give you a little teaser, <clears throat> we're booked almost through all the way into the end of May already, which is amazing. Jane, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, you guys are still commenting. This is so great. You can't believe that Joyce is uh, 84. I want to be like her when I grew up. Oh, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Thank you, Cynthia, for being here on this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. You guys are really the best. If this is your first time experiencing what we do here, this great community we have uh, created uh, of Lovities, that's our audience, Lovities, we, uh, we welcome you. Thank you very much, Sherry Larson. Loved Joyce in Match Game. Yes, she was, she was funny on Match Game. Remember Match Game? Gene Rayburn, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson, Riley, Fanny Flagg. There she is on Match Game, Joyce Bullifant. There she was. We were talking about Betty White as well. 
And she was mentioning Betty White and how Betty White was the real deal and a beautiful person as well. And of course, we just lost Betty White not that long ago. And uh, and Gavin McLeod, of course, who played, uh, as I mentioned, her husband, Murray, on Mary Tyler Moore and Captain Steubing on The Love Boat. And Ed Asner, too, we lost not that long ago. So Joyce really is one of the remaining cast members of the Mary Tyler Moore show. When you think about it, because Georgia Engel, who played Ted Knight's wife, Ted Baxter's wife, she's gone. And Mary Tyler Moore's gone. And Ed Asner and uh, Clarice Leachman, Valerie uh, Harper, who then went on to be Rhoda. Clarice Leachman went on to be uh, Phyllis. And uh, they're, they're all gone as well. And uh, Gavin McLeod, and of course, Ed Asner, Lou Grant. Um, so I think the only ones left from the series now were, uh, would be John Amos, who was James Evans on Norman Lear's Good Times. That's right. First, he was Harry Evans when Est Esther Roll was Florida on Maud with B. Arthur. If you know Good Times, of course, you know then Maud was a spinoff of All in the Family. All in the Family started it all. Then Maud was um, Edith Bunker's cousin. They loved that show so much. CBS, William Paley, the chairman of the board of CBS, loved that show so much. That episode where B. Arthur was cousin Maud. He said, who's that? Who is that? And of course, she was a veteran of the stage and so much more at that time. They said, Give her her own show. Give her her. She's hilarious. So Norman Lear created Maud as a result of that. And then Florida was played by Esther Roll. And, uh, and they loved that as well. So Norman Lear gave Florida good times. John Amos, Amos, who was her husband on Maud as Harry Evans, became James Evans on Maud. And, but, and then, of course, you have all the other, the Jeffersons live next door and uh, Gloria was also uh, with Sally Struthers was a spinoff and, and so many uh, Archie Bunker's place was another one, but um, really cool stuff. When you look back at all those shows and binge watch all those classic shows and, uh, but John Amos, who was also in roots too, that uh, Alex Haley, incredible miniseries on ABC, the world stopped when ABC aired roots Back in the 70s, it was one of the most watched miniseries of all time. And it was epic. Um, John Amos was in that as well. So John Amos and Joyce Boulafont are the remaining um, cast members from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Beautiful home, Joyce. You're truly a woman inside and out. A beautiful woman inside and out. You're so humble. God bless you. Yes. <laughs> Jane stays way up past her uh, bedtime. Uh, she's watching in Sweden and she stays up way past her bedtime. And Maureen uh, Wiedepohl in Arizona, she was very, very kind. And again, when our shows are live, you can do super chat, super emoji, super stickers. That helps support our series. And she did that. We want to acknowledge that again. A personal thanks from me and all of us here. Um, that's very kind of you. That means she really enjoyed the show and she wants to support it. So that's something you can do in live chat when the show is live. If you missed the opportunity to do that, super chat, super emoji, super stickers during live chat, there's a little heart icon underneath all the episodes and it's a little heart and it says, thanks. And some of you have done that. I know Terry Ann has done it and others have done it on various episodes. And we thank you very much. That helps support what we're doing as well. And that's on the YouTube channel underneath every single episode. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, that helps our series grow big time as well. We'd really appreciate it. Just click the red button, subscribe. There's no cost for that. And make sure you click the notification bell as well so you never miss any of the episodes because uh, you might want to be here when the shows are live so the guest can see your comments and I can see them and we can interact, which is something that we do on our show. Not everybody does that, but we love to do that on the Gym Master Show Live. I like to be an interactive communal host. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps us big time. It really does. And if you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up. You'll see a thumbs up icon there. Little thumbs up icon. You know, when you give that, when you click that thumbs up icon on all of our episodes and you leave a comment 
which many of you have been doing lately, and we love that. Thank you so very much for leaving comments underneath all these episodes and telling us why you're enjoying our shows and particular episodes. YouTube loves to see that too. They take the episode because they see the activity and then they blast it out to more people. So when you do a thumbs up, like on our YouTube channel, and we leave a comment, it actually helps our series big time, our series, The Gym Masters Show, where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. Let's take a look at uh, another comment here, and then we will wrap up. I actually have to call somebody in about 20 minutes to set up a television news shoot. Uh, the work never stops, but we we love it. Like Joyce, she loves it. I love it too. And uh, I love communicating with people and I love communicating with all of you. I get excited when I see, you know, all of you popping in here. And then I also get excited when I see the folks that watch our series when it's not live, get a chance to see comments on the YouTube channel from people who maybe didn't see the show live, but they watch it later on quietly, uh, you know, at their leisure, which you can because all these episodes are archived for you. So, um, Cool stuff. You guys are great. Let's see. Another comment coming in. Uh, Jane in Sweden says, it shows what a great host you are when guests want to come back. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Jane. I, I take it as a compliment when the guests do want to come back. Have a wonderful rest of your night, dear Jim and my lovely family. Sending you all so much love and tight lovely hugs. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. You have a good dinner there in Encino, my friend, Toby. And when I'm out there on a television shoot or something, taking me out, maybe a, a visit, we have family that are in California as well. We have family all over the country, Canada. We have a big family, relatives everywhere. I'll come see you and we will have dinner. Thank you, Mona. Appreciate that. Beautiful Mona watching in Louisiana. We're still using all those spices that you sent recently beautiful box you sent. Thank you very much. You guys send cards and letters. You write to me uh, privately and email. You uh, send Instagram messages and tweets. You share the links on all your social media. That really helps us as well. Thanks to all of you who have been doing that, the YouTube episode links, sharing it and telling your family and friends and colleagues to tune in and watch our show. That's so beautiful. Uh, you are so right, Jane. He's a great host. I sure miss Jim and all. Um, Oh, you know, a lot of people say that to me, like if I'm off one night because I have a family event or, you know, a TV shoot or something takes me out of the area, uh, you guys get depressed. <laughs> well, I miss you too. So we, we, so we, we, we always hurry back. And, uh, and if you're not able to watch the show when it's live, then thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, beautiful words. Um, it's funny. Some of our viewers, if they if they have an event in their life, which we understand, you can't always be here live, but many of you are. Um, I think it's so funny and beautiful, actually, and I respect it greatly. You guys send me notes, uh, or you, or even on your social media, you say, "Oh, I can't be there tonight. There's a baby shower, or something we have to do," uh, and I, I apologize. You you apologize for not being here if uh, you miss an episode while it's live. <laughs> And uh, that tells you something. That really tells you that um, we've created something very, very special here on uh, the Gym Masters Show Live. Something really that just seems to uh, resonate with people in a way that, um, you know, has surpassed my expectations. I wouldn't be doing this show any other way unless it uh, resonates with people and, and it has to resonate with me, you know, I have to enjoy it and it has to be something that, um, you know, brings pleasure and brings um, inspiration and, and a couple of laughs along the way. We, we really do have a good time on our show. Um, when I look back at some of those earlier episodes, there's been some really rare, epic moments and, and lots of world premiere exclusives and, and all kinds of cool things that have happened on the show. And sometimes you just never know what happens and you're here to witness it all. <laughs> you're here to witness it all. And, um, mm. <laughs> oh my God, you got, you sent an Easter box last year. It took us weeks to finish it. 
it was filled with so many incredible things. Don't worry about sending an Easter box of goodies this year, Kathleen. You and I will be getting, once you're settled in your new digs, and I'm happy for you, I texted you, um, we'll get together. We'll paint the town red in Manhattan, okay? Uh, we'll get together again in Manhattan, and we will uh, do it up, and we'll celebrate your new digs. And uh, and this show, because this show in uh, just a couple of weeks is celebrating two years and almost well, by then it will be over 650 episodes, 650. Most television seasons are not 650 episodes. A lot of Broadway shows, a lot of other things are not 650 unless it's Phantom of the Opera or something, but it's like amazing that we've, I, I find it amazing. I've been able to fit it in the schedule to do so many shows just about seven days a week live. And that's the way we started it. Um, we were the show that decided to do it live interactive and, um, constantly. And, uh, that's really fantastic. Um, I would look really stylish and skin tight Wrangler jeans, blue denim. I think I might have worn those on one of my first uh, headshot sessions. Uh, I, sh I should bring those I'm gonna, next time, one of these times when we have a lovely show. I'm going to show some photos, some of the very first headshots I had. I used to do some print modeling um, early in the career. I did print modeling, magazines, you know, print print ads and things. And I still have the the portfolio with the very first headshots that I ever had professionally taken in New York, taken for me in New York for the portfolio because you had to have the headshots. And um, I, I think I'll dig those out. We'll have some fun. Um, that makes me think of that. I, I I don't know if I was in Wrangler denim jeans, <laughs> uh, but there were probably jeans. I, I don't doubt there was jeans involved in those, those headshots. Uh, as well as suit and tie and all the sweaters and all the different looks that uh, require and demand uh, of it all. But um, cool stuff. So uh, again, some amazing guests coming up. And uh, on Sunday night, we are probably going to be doing the host lovity chat show where we are celebrating our childhoods. So gang, Last call for those that are watching live. If you're watching this, you know, three weeks from now, six months from now, this will be past tense. Send us one photo of you as a child because on Sunday, we have two shows on Sunday. We haven't scheduled the other one yet, the second one, but we do have this one, singers, songwriters, cousins Gib from the Bee Gees family. They're going to be with us at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. GMT. Then we'll be back on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific live for our celebrating our childhoods, which I think a lot of you did today watching the Joyce Boulafon episode, celebrating our childhoods episode. And we are going to be showing the baby pictures and kid pictures of many of our viewers. You know, I'm also going to do probably an episode where we get some childhood photos, not this episode that's coming up, but I'm probably going to do an episode where we get some childhood photos of our guests. The guests, when they were kids, wouldn't be cool. You know, some if they were a child actor, like Barry Livingston was on our show, who played Ernie Douglas on My Three Sons. Well, you can see what he was like as a kid, but you don't have his baby picture. <laughs> Maybe some of the guests will have them uh, send in their baby pictures and or their kid pictures, and we'll do a show. We'll have the guests on, and we'll do that as well. But here's the last call. It's Friday by midnight Eastern is the last call to get those pictures in. One picture is good of you as a kid and sent it in, send it in. And uh, you can email it to jimmasterstv at gmail.com. That's jimmasterstv uh, at gmail.com. That's the uh, email address we're using right now. And you can, you know, send it there. 
if you'd like to, and, um, you know, feel free, uh, to do that. So, um, but again, tomorrow's the cutoff today's Thursday at the time of this broadcasting. And you could be watching this at any time of the day. It could be any day of the week when you're watching this in the archives, but at the time of the show is Thursday. So tomorrow midnight Eastern Friday, uh, cut off to get the photo in, uh, you know, it could be you in, in a crib. It could be you and your 12 now and if you don't have one of you if you can't find one or they were lost in a flood or something um you can send in a photo of a grandchild or your child or or somebody else so if, if you don't have a photo of you when you were a baby or a child you can still participate in this fun episode that's coming up you can send a photo of your grandchild instead or your child or, or a friend's kid or, or something. Uh, or maybe you're a foster parent or, or big brother, big sister. That works great as well. So, uh, you know, as long as they let you send it, you know, if it's somebody else's kid, then you have to make sure you ask before their photo goes up on the screen. <clears throat> so make sure you get that. But, um, Feel free again uh, to uh, send that in. Lisa Rodrigo is already on top of it. She's in in three. <laughs> so we'll throw them up in the air and we'll see whichever one lands face up, right? Uh, you're going to send your masters a pair of Wranglers? Cowboy cut? Do you, do you work for them or do you work in a store? Because if you did, I wish you worked for Banana Republic, J. Crew, uh, Macy's, H&M, uh, some others, <laughs> Nordstrom's, <laughs> uh, thanks, Jim. You are real to share with such sincerity, um, heartfelt. Thank you very much. I know no other way, uh, Cynthia, and that's how I am off the air. And that's how I am on the air in my, uh, professional work as well. And I appreciate your, your picking that out. Um, you guys are the best. This is great. A little chat session happening here. I haven't had dinner yet. 9.20 p.m. I have to call somebody in about 10 minutes to schedule a television. One of my professional roles is uh, I co-host a television news magazine series and a daily radio series with my co-host, who happens to be Doug Llewellyn, who hosts The People's Court TV show. He's a dear friend of mine, and we've been colleagues for about 20 years. Um and so cool stuff. All right. One more time. We want to push the book. Absolutely. There it is. My four Hollywood husbands. And she had wonderful stories about each of them. Absolutely. Gang, you're the best. Still a lot of people watching right now. That's why it's tough for us to say goodbye. So we don't say goodbye. We just say, see you later. We say, ciao, shalom. Sayonara, Avita Zain, Mori Loop, uh, Slancha, and all the rest. But we but we never say goodbye here. So again, join us for the next episode of the Jim Masters Show live tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Once again, we thank the extraordinary jo Joyce Boulafont for joining us here on the show. Class act all the way. And we thank you and you and you and you for joining us here on the show. We really, really appreciate all the love, all the comments, all the interactivity, and uh, the JMS levity. I look forward to the show with all of you. A lot of work behind the scenes putting them together, but it's worth it to see the guests' response and your response. Night, night two as well. Cynthia, everybody says good night. This is like an episode of the uh, Waltons, where everybody says good night to one another and to us. Um, it's kind of cool. All right. Good night, John boy. We'll see you guys again soon. Don't forget to give this episode a thumbs up on our YouTube channel. Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. We'd love it. And we'll see you on the next one. I'll be here waiting for you. If you're not here live, catch it in the archive. Oh, I like that. I just came up with a, if you're not here live, catch it in the archive. Oh, I should come up with a song. I should call one of my composer friends and have them come up with a song on the Jim Masters show live. If you're not here live, catch it in the archive. I kind of like that. Imagine that whole conversation with Joyce Boulevard and the way the audio was coming out on her end. I sounded like Daffy Duck. <laughs> we were laughing hysterically before the show went live because 
you know, again, we wanted to make sure the technical aspects were perfect. But then when she finally got it all connected, hooked up, she, she actually was, um, first she was on her laptop and it wasn't working, wasn't jiving with our streaming service. So she, I said, go with the phone, try to go with the phone. So at the last minute she went with the phone, she hooked it all up herself. And, um, and then she sat in different parts of the house to try to get the best signal and the best background and lighting and all. So it was just so funny. And then all of a sudden she said, my voice, wherever she was sitting there, something must've been interfering with the sound. She said it started to come through to her like a, a, a Daffy Duck sound. So that whole conversation I had with Joyce, as brilliant as it is, it sounds good to you. It sounds good to me. It sounds good in the archives, sound good live on air. She heard it as Daffy Duck. <laughs> So she's going to watch this in the archives and she'll hear the voice as it is. Um, and I'm going to give her a quick call after the show anyway. To I always like to thank everybody. All right. We got to scoot out. You guys are amazing. You are still here and you're still commenting and you're still sharing. So um, get those uh, childhood photos in quickly uh, so we can uh, by tomorrow. We don't want anybody to feel left out. And uh, if you know somebody that watches our show regularly and you don't see them here tonight, uh, let them know because maybe they would love to be a part of it, but they didn't see the show recently because maybe things are happening in their life and uh, they're not aware of the fact that, you know, because a lot of our viewers love when we do the host chat levity episodes because it's really interactive. So, uh, you know, let anybody know that you normally know that, you know, normally watches this series, let them know uh, that we're doing that. We're going to do it on Sunday, this Sunday at 7 Eastern. So two shows, Double Lovety Sunday, Cousins Gib from the Bee Gees family, 2 o'clock Sunday Eastern, and then a fabulous childhood celebration show Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Night from the Bronx. Night from the Bronx from Sue. Night from Queens from Kathleen in the Big Apple. You guys are the best. All right. So see you later. Thanks for being with us, hanging out with us here on uh, the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Wonderful community we've created here of Lovities. And uh, it's always great to be in your presence. We really, really enjoy it. Very special show we've created here daily for all of you. Wherever you're watching around the world, whatever time of the day it is, watching live or watching this in the archives, thank you so very much for being here, for sharing the love about this show, supporting the show uh, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all at Gym Masters TV, our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and everything else you guys do. So you're the best. Best viewers in the world uh, on the internet are right here on the Gym Masters Show Live. And you're duly noted. We'll see you on the next one, okay? Your host, Gym Masters here, thanking you for your time this time till next time. Be well. Take care, love one another, be good to one another, and cheers. <laughs>